Welcome to Grubbin' Chuggin'. On this episode of Grubbin' with Cole Moo, we have a variety of beers, including Omegums, Iron Throne, Blondale. Where's my dragons? We also have Left Hand Brewing's Wake Up Dead and the Brewery Trade Winds. We're excited to finally give you the review of the Game of Thrones beer. Oh my god, I love Game of Thrones. I like how many boobies they show. <laughs> Let us start off with Left Hand Brewing's Wake Up Dead. They actually have two different versions of this beer. Uh, one is barrel aged, okay. and the other is not. Alright, so is that just an ale, or...? It's an Imperial Stout. Oh, okay. And of course, I opted for the barrel aged version. So what are we running percentage wise here? This comes in at 10.2. Okay. I know I saw a one out of two there. ABV. Spinning it around there. 10.2. Holy shit. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Very sweet. Wow. That Imperial. That Imperial's coming through. I'm kind of torn on this one already. Like, I'm not sure if I'm going <laughs> to like this one. Like, I love the Stouts and the Imperials <clears throat> even, but... Let's, let's find out, huh? Cheers. Ooh. Ooh, wow. That one's surprisingly mild. Yeah. It is really sweet, but everything else around that, like, it's not too it, bitter. Yeah, well, like, you get that nice bitterness at the end. Yeah, at the very end. But, like, it's it's weird. Like, you get that high alcohol sweet, and then it kind of, with the stout flavor, it kind of just melts to this weird chocolate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very malty up in front, sort of chocolatey and... Mild in the middle and then ends really bitter. Yeah, or yeah. not really bitter, but just sort of bitter. It, it's what you would expect from an imperial stout at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's that's a really interesting brew. But as far as ten point two goes, I mean, you can tell because of how sweet it is up front, but the overall flavor profile of it is very pleasant. Yeah, I mean, like you could easily drink two of these and just you. Yeah, the this is the this is just... one of the ones. One of the rare high percentage ones that you can actually keep drinking. It, it's not overbearing. Uh, I wouldn't say like keep drinking. Like you could do two of these bottles and be set for the rest of the night, but you're going to well, drink other things and just not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not remember a fucking thing. And this <laughs> will be the reason for it. But I mean, you could go through two of these and then be like, "Do I want a third one? Probably not. Could I drink a third one? Yes." <laughs> Well played. Is there a third well one? Okay, I'll drink it. <laughs> yes. Okay. I see your point. I would say just barely too sweet. Barely too sweet. It would be an 8 if it was just a little bit less sweet. I'm going to give it a 7.5. See, I was going to give it a 7.5 as well. And, like, the sweetness, I think, actually kind of helps it because it goes with the rest of the flavors and it uh -huh. kind of masks the sweet. Like, it, it's... I would like a little more... Just a little bit more funk to it, you know? You think so? Just a little bit something on the edge of it. Next up, we have the brewery, Trade Wits. And this is an 8.1% uh, Belgian-style triple. Brewed with rice and Thai basil. I actually tried uh, their sour beer called Sour in the Rye. How was that? I I did the it. sours. I do, too. I enjoy sours. Uh... They have this sort of like the lambic sourness to mm -hmm. them, but they don't have fruit flavor. They're yeah, no, there beer. was a, uh, it was a, it was a bean cherry sour, and it was so good because uh -huh. it tasted exactly the way a bean cherry would. Mm -hmm. It was so amazing, and like I love the shit out of this stuff. Everybody else tried it, and they're like, "Dude, you're out of your fucking mind!" But it was fantastic. Ooh, and that smells like fucking alfalfa. It smells like fruit. Cheers. That first initial flavor is very fruity, almost like candy. It's very sweet, but it sort of like, it dies off and then gets really kind of foamy and weird, like that orange peel bitter. I like it. Like, <sighs> I kind of like it. Like the, the bitterness I can do without, but it's kind of like you were saying earlier, where you get that nice flavor and then it gets bitter and then you want to drink it some more to get rid of that bitter flavor at the end like I just I want to drink this whole bottle just because it's <laughs> in one sitting it's good uh-huh it's it's very strange it's weird man to me it almost tastes like if they took blue moon turned that into some kind of hard candy 
and then turn that hard candy flavor into a different beer. You know, I honestly think it is the basil. Is that it the I basil? Like the basil this hitting this drink? You? Yeah, because like being down with the Palomino, mm -hmm. they're uh, like the basil gimlet and stuff that they had. You have the citrus, then you have maybe the that's alcohol, the weird flavor. I think that's the weird thing. The, like that basil, there was something about it. Like you would never ever expect. Excuse me. Those things to go together. Fantastic. I'm not sure if I love it or I hate it. <laughs> I like it. Like, I couldn't drink multiple of these bottles, but this would be one of those where I'd sit down and... It'd be like if you just felt like killing a bottle of champagne. I think I could that's what it is. It's so, like the sweetness of it and the fizziness of it sort of reminds me of a champagne. So... It doesn't make me want to enjoy the beer. It makes me want to swig the entire bottle really quick. You want to drink? Exactly. You know what? I'm going to give this one a seven and a half. Seven and a half? Seven and a half. Just because. I'm going to give it a seven with an asterisk. <laughs> and the asterisk is going to lead to a little text that says, this beer is fucking weird. I don't know. I feel like I could drink more of this in the future when I'm less drunk and be like, Oh my god, that's the best beer I've ever had. Yeah. Or I could be like, wow, that's the worst beer I ever had. Yeah, it's like, man, I was obviously drunk when I drank that because... It's woo. a very d unique flavor of beer. And finally, we have Game of Thrones. Iron Throne Blonde Ale. Dracarys! So you did see me try this in a previous open thread. Uh, I did not give a review, however. And Wero wasn't there to give his review either. So I just cackled like a girl from the background. I'm like, <laughs> apparently he cut that out from the open thread. I was kind of pissed. <laughs> you get pissed every time I cut you out of anything. I know you're a dick. I'm a fragile little guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'd kill a Lannister for this one. Oh, yeah. Like, <clears throat> immediately up in front, you get this tartness. And then it gets to the bitter and the sweet uh, and the ale sort of flavor. Oh, it's right. got that, that sharpness because it's not as high ABV. It has that ale flavor in there that's like, that's what you want out of beer when you have a fucking... You want a pint of beer. You want that ale. What if I... It, it's amazing how many different variations. Like, apparently I don't know beer very well. But, like, most ales are darker. For the most part. Uh, usually, but this is a blonde ale. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, never mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should read the bottle and pay attention to what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know you are right now. Sometimes I should probably act professional, <laughs> but it's not going to happen. But it's got that 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 sharp bitter up in front near the front like a pale ale does mm -hmm. And I think that serves it very well With the Belgian well, it, flavor and the sweet flavor for it me it, it finishes off with like the, that mirror pond bitterness Yeah, it does, at the same it time. does. Like, So like you, you get that that IPA But then you get the sweetness of the the uh, Belgian -y, and then yeah, and then it kind of finishes off like the Mirror Pond, and it, like, I don't know, it's it's a, it's a really weird... It's very well-rounded, well it has full flavor, it's very satisfying to drink. Compared to the other two, this one's getting, getting an 8.5. Like yeah, that that's actually what I was thinking too, is that that I, I have to give it an 8.5. It is a solid, delicious beer. Uh, Omegang, oh one like, of my favorite breweries, no, well, see, that's, that's one of the reasons that I'm going to give it such a high fucking mark, is because I don't like any of the other Omegang oh beers. <laughs> I don't like them. This is a good fucking beer. Three really solid beers, and one standout that's just a, it's a licensed cash-in, <laughs> basically. But it's yeah. delicious. This has been Grubbin' with Colt Moo. Thank you for joining us.